Hi, thank you again for joining us and watching our video that presents our parish mission on the title, God is on the move. That is an answer to the question, what is the church? So we say the church is God on the move, the movement of God in us. And that movement causes us to do three different things. And we have talked about the first thing that the movement of God does in us is to learn and learn about God through Jesus Christ, learning about Jesus. This particular video uh, talks about the second way that God moves in us. And that movement is that God causes us to worship. Or the church is God moving in us to come together and put into a ritual what we learned, what we learned in, in listening to Jesus and, and, and coming to Jesus and receiving from Jesus. So we see that we do not just receive from Jesus, but we come together to worship. And the worship is to worship what we have learned. It is to practice what we have learned. But in a ritual form, if you like, we dramatize. We dramatize what we have learned from Jesus. The liturgy, therefore, which is the name that is given to our Christian worship, uh, means that, that the church comes together to do a piece of work. Liturgy is the work of the people. Liturgy means the work of the people. And therefore, liturgy also uh, is a prayer. Uh, is the public prayer, not an individual prayer, because remember, the church is a group of people. The church of, is a group of people who belong to Jesus Christ, who assemble, who assemble, in order to, to remember what Jesus told them and to practice what Jesus told them. So coming together in worship, uh, we look at that as a communal thing, not an individual thing. This is where the church gathers in a church building or a place that the people come together and remember, remembering what Jesus taught them we do that in readings, reading the scriptures. We are remembering what Jesus taught us. And then, and then we, are, we are sent forth. We are sent forth from, from the meeting. We eat there. We remember what Jesus has taught us. We eat together and then we are sent. Uh, we take in what symbolically what Jesus has taught us. And then we are sent to be what we have eaten. So... Remember these three parts again, when the church gathers, when the church comes together to worship, we remember what we have learned. We have talked about learning already. And then we eat, we eat into ourselves what we have learned. And then we are sent forth to go and practice what we have learned. So you see that the worship, uh, worshiping Jesus is in the middle way between learning and actually acting in the way of Jesus when we go home. We learn about Jesus, but here in this particular form of God's movement in us, we ritualize, we, we, we kind of practice, and we make promises that we will live like Jesus when we go away from the church. So worship is a very important thing and it's, a very, uh, uh, it's very central to Christianity itself, to the church. The church is a church that comes together to worship Jesus. And liturgy, therefore, or worship comes from our Judeo-Christian belief as well. 
Because in our Judeo-Christian belief, Israel celebrated what we call the Passover. The Passover is the way that the Jewish community that was appointed by God, they come together to celebrate this meal. They eat this meal together to remember how God saved them. The Passover is God sparing them. So they eat this meal as a way of their independence celebration. Jesus Christ, who is the founder of our religion, also ate this meal in his own life. He ate this meal with his disciples because the early disciples that followed Jesus were all Jewish. So they all celebrated the Passover. However, the last time he ate that Passover with his disciples, they usually will eat the meal and then drink a cup. But the last time around, when Jesus was eating with them, Jesus pulled a second cup. And that second cup, he told them, this one is the new thing that I'm going to do. It's the new meal that I would like you to eat. And this cup is the new covenant, he says. This is a new relationship. This is a new way of eating together. And when I die, I want you to continue to eat this. Come together always and do this in remembrance of me, he told them. So the Christian community that came out of the Jewish community continued to practice that, the second cup. That second cup symbolizes Jesus in their midst. It's the new way. It's the church's way. Uh, the new people who followed Jesus Christ, they began to do the second cup. And that second cup simply means the new Passover, the new meal, the new sacrifice, the new worship that they were supposed to always do in the name of Jesus. So Jesus transformed the Passover to his own sacrifice, his own giving of himself. The meal is what we come to eat to assure that Jesus is among us. We come to eat this meal to symbolize everything that we have learned about Jesus. The most important thing that we learn about Jesus is how to be good human beings. And therefore, the meal that we eat is a way of life. It teaches us a way of sacrificing in our lives, a way of being good, a way of being loving, a way of being sharing people, a way of being patient people, and so on and so forth. We come to ritualize that. But remember that that is only a ritual. The meal, the worship is only a ritual. It is not the reality yet. It is a ritual that we come to, 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 to practice and perform. Its practical purpose is out there in the world, in, our, in the different departments of our lives. So we come to eat at Mass. We call it a Mass uh, where we break bread, we read the Word of God, but we also break the bread and eat, and then we depart. But the real life is waiting for us out there. How we go to make people human and good again is what the mass or the sacrifice or the worship does. So in our church, therefore, the church makes sure that this gathering is very important for us, that we do it well so that it can, in fact, inspire us so when we go away, we don't forget. We celebrate in such a way that its memory stays in our minds and reminds us when we go into the world, when we go into our families. So we have different ministries in the church that are called liturgical ministries. These ministries function uh, as the church. They function in a way to make every individual that attends 
that is participating to receive that teaching of Jesus Christ in the form of bread and wine. We eat the bread and drink the cup. So we have people who read to us who are called lectors or proclaimers, and they proclaim the word of God to us. There are Eucharistic ministers who minister the Eucharist, that is the, the, in the species of bread and wine to us. There are people who minister around the altar that are called altar service. There are hospitality ministers. Everybody who does something for us to be able to celebrate and worship in a way that will be effective in our lives are called liturgical ministers. So you might have even uh, those who, who, who make sure our sound system are good, uh, are effective, so that the Word of God can be heard or to bring a visual representation of what we are doing to people who might not even be practically and physically there with us. So that the Mass or the worship inspires us to be able to remember when we even go away from the church premises. So the church is that uh, ministry. The church is that, is that group of people that do not just learn, as we said in the former video about Jesus, but they also come together to put in a ritual form uh, to dramatize and to worship uh, uh, Jesus so that they can be inspired and equipped to go out there and represent Jesus to the rest of the world, making humanity good again. Thank you for watching this segment of our parish mission video, and I encourage you to come back again and watch us in the next video where we'll talk about the practical aspect of following Jesus.